Welcome back to week six, day one of the HS Pro League. And join with me at the Xfinity desk, none other than Tom T. Squared Taylor. Oh, thank you. And of course, we just saw a crazy series, crazy for a lot of other reasons than close per se. But we have some more exciting matches in store for you here. And today, or tonight, or now, anyway, we have Renegades going up against Evil Geniuses. The rematch with everything on the line here for these two teams. Kyle, I believe that you were saying that this is the single most important match that we've seen in the entire HCS Pro League. No more excuses here. It is time for these teams to go out and play their best if they want to go and try to get into that top four position and so much is on the line when it comes to, are these teams gonna stick together if they don't even get in the top four? This could be the last couple weeks that we see these same exact rosters on Renegades, on Evil Geniuses sticking together. Uh, I mean, that's another great point that a lot of people don't necessarily think about. And this is not only the match of the week here, in my eyes, this is the match of the season so far. We've seen great ones before, but this one, and what is on the line for these two, these two teams and what, the, the placing and strive that these two teams have for winning and of course making it to finals, everything comes down to this. So I want to take a look at Renegades and let's see how they've kind of stacked up so far this season. Of course, we've got Commonly, Ninja, Victory X, and Penguin commonly, of course, coming over from Evil Geniuses. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a grudge match there as well. Yeah, you can see com commonly is an X Games gold medalist. That was on Evil Geniuses when they took down CLG in Aspen. So a lot of history when it comes to these uh, teams here. Victory X having some history as well with Lunchbox and Roy, who you know are on Evil Geniuses. So I'm curious to see who's going to step up. It's going to be a whole team effort if these guys want to take this one down. And let's take a look at what they've done so far this season here and how they've matched up against these other teams. So, of course, taking a look at the stats here, 0-2 against Counter Logic Gaming, but uh, there's only one person that can say anything else besides that, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then one of the biggest surprising, you know, upsets here from this team, and it wasn't really a surprise in my eyes when it happened, but as the season's gone on and we've seen them improve so much, the Enigma 6 taking a victory over them 3-1. Well, here's the thing, is that Renegades plays Enigma 6 really well, even in scrims a lot of this is matchup based and as you can see they are 0 and 1 against you know evil geniuses so did they learn anything from the last time they played them have they been watching scrims going up to this because it was a 3-0 you know obviously renegades winning the games that they have to splitting against allegiance not what they wanted to do but winning against optic winning against liquid as expected did drop their uh series against envy but all in all five and five 19 and 19 completely even steven all right and let's take a look at who they're going up against of course, we've got Evil Geniuses, the Snipe Down, the Lunchbox, the Roy, the Suspector. We highlighted it on already. There is a lot, not necessarily a bad blood, but there's a lot of history here between these two teams. And when it goes into game, you know, they are the enemy. Yeah, and let's take a look at what Evil Geniuses has done this season. As you can see, the matchups overall, their record for maps is 15 and 19. Their overall win to loss is four to six. And you know, what stands out, obviously losing to Counter Logic Gaming and losing to E6 0 to 2. And who, who are we gonna watch though? It's gonna be up to Ninja individually, in my opinion. The Bud Light All-Star, one of the most popular Halo streamers, made his appearance on Family Feud. Is he gonna be able to go absolutely huge? Sometimes we've seen games where he drops the 20 bombs in Slayer and really carries. Also commonly, so dirty with the objective. Penguin, a great overall player. So, you know, are they gonna be able to put down this EG team who's a little bit been on the ropes the last couple weeks. Yeah, that's a really good point as well. And of course, that appearance on Family Feud, if you haven't seen it, it is quite hilarious and pretty, had a lot of success there. Now we did have a chance to chat with Ninja here. Let's hear what he has to say about this upcoming match. Um, well, we learned a couple of things when we played them the first time. Obviously, to not underestimate them, you know, we knew that they weren't doing too good, obviously. Uh, their scrim at, their scrim results weren't uh, weren't like very uh, intimidating. Nothing really. I mean, we just you know we went in thinking that we could take them out uh, if we were just playing our game, and uh, we definitely underestimated them. They were all at the same house, which is another thing that we took away. Um, you can't underestimate uh, the power of people you know landing and uh, and being next to one another and being able to see each other's screens. So actually, we have uh, commonly uh, out of his own pocket. Uh, booked a flight, he's actually gonna be with Zane, uh, Penguin, they're gonna be at the same house this weekend, or this week, uh, because we, I mean, we realize this, this, this match is super important. And uh, I mean, it's gonna be a good one, so. There via Ninja on Skype that this team 
is, is ready. They're being coming prepared for this match. They know Evil Geniuses is over at their team house, and they're looking to kind of repeat some of the success that you can have being in the same area. Yeah, I mean, that's really impressive from Ninja, the fact that commonly flew out to Penguin's place, but also realizing that, you know, they did drop a series before. Are there places to room, make room improvements and learn? Of course there is. So definitely, you know, has a good head on his shoulders, and, you know, it's not going to be easy, and he knows it's going to be a good one. Absolutely. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the game types here as we are getting the players ready. Game one, Empire Strongholds, followed by Plaza Slayer. Fathom CTF for game three, Plaza Strongholds, and then a game five, should we need to go there, Regret Slayer. Now, we are getting the players set up in game. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Empire Strongholds. Of course, this map has changed a lot from World Championships mm -hmm. and, and what you can expect, the, the addition of the saw mm -hmm. and the other weapons. Now, kind of in regards to this series, one of the most interesting parts is that these are three new game types that these teams have not met up on yet. Right. They've literally not played each other on these game types. Uh, as far as Empire Strongholds, uh, uh, looks like they Renegades does have a 1-0 victory, so not, haven't lost yet, mm -hmm. lost that yet, haven't lost Plaza Slayer, and so on and so forth. We'll touch base on those a little bit further. Looks like we got the players in the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at this Empire Strongholds once more. Of course, 100 points to win. The uh, saw on the map, the overshield that was spawning outside. Mm -hmm. I really like all of the updates here to this I map. Love, I love the updates for this map, especially with the overshield outside. But this map still is all about the pit. It's so important to control the pit in this game type. Whoever gets the pit in the beginning of the game is going to have a huge advantage. So I'm curious to see who's going to be desperate for that. And we look at all the melees happening right off the sp okay. start of this game. Two Spartan charges back to back, one from each team. It looks like the quick early advantage lead is going over in the favor of, of Renegades, picking up yeah, that quick kill. Yeah, Ninja maybe didn't have to sit there and challenge that, but he did have those players weak. Nobody has uh, capped the side base yet for the side of Renegades, and it looks like they do have the pit, so Ninja gonna try to get that, but Snipedown did pick up the saw, so if there's any chance of them coming back, he would be using that, but he drops it, and the Overshield player is gonna pick that up as well, so Pit and Red Base going over to the sides of Renegades. EG is gonna have to make a push probably outside to try to either get into that pit or go into the Red Base. Meanwhile, Renegades is going for that triple cap. That looks like that's Victory X over there trying to get blue base. Meanwhile, Snipe Down who is getting taken down by Commonly. So he was crouching there trying to stay alive. Didn't clear out the guy inside blue and didn't really do much there. So, um, you know, definitely Renegades looking really, really strong starting off with this triple cap. Yeah, and it looks like Roy is able to stay alive. So stop the bleeding a little bit here for Evil Geniuses, but they are far from having control. As you can see in the player kill cam there, Ninja takes out Snipe Down. Lunchbox does clean up that kill, but now you got Victor X kind of hiding in pit, probably thinking all the players are in turbine there, but he is quickly uh, caught off guard, but look at him running <laughs> around like a ninja, staying alive for as yeah. long as he possibly can. Yeah, a little dipsy doodle there around the corner. Meanwhile, Roy trying to take this pit, but it is contested, so it looks like they are just going to try to put bodies here to contest this over and over again. Ninja gets the kill. It hasn't been reset yet, so EG possibly will, but to get this only a sliver away, and Renegades gets the reset. That is absolutely huge call. And I can't believe Ninja stayed alive there. He was so close to being taken out by Roy and all of a sudden control back in the favor of Renegades. Evil Genius is not able to capitalize and 30 point lead already to get this one started. Yeah, but two players falling outside. Looks like Suspector was able to get a kill. Ninja the last time line of defense here for the pit. Someone did come around security to try to take him out and it looks like EG finally going to be able to capture this pit, but no. All right, it looks like now they finally are able to capture that, which is big because Overshield and Saw are coming up and it seems like Renegades is all spawning on top of this blue platform. So if EG can secure the weapons and can uh, get the overshield, they should be able to push in and get this triple cap. And we do see the saw out of lunchbox here, looking to try to pick up that triple cap, commonly contesting him, oh. and he wins. Wow, assault rifle versus saw. That was a huge individual battle that lunchbox needed to win. He kind of just stood still there and shot. He needed to be moving around, using the walls, taking different angles, jumping, thrusting, whatever it was, but he just got outplayed there by commonly, who only had an assault rifle. And Ninja on the other end of the map here, doing some work, picking up a capture, staying alive. Now, EG is picking up some 
control, but looks like that overshield also went in the favor of Victory X here on Renegades. And just like that, they're able to capture Pit at least three down. Yeah, three down for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, and the last player is caught out at red base. That is Suspector. Suspector trying to stay alive. Meanwhile, his teammates are outside trying to help him, and Renegades is going to be capturing blue base. So that's a triple cap. Meanwhile, everyone from EG definitely going to try to get into that base, but Ninja knows, hey, that one's gone. It's okay. We still are capping, so there's no reason to stay, uh, to drop down and contest anything. I'm just going to wait for them to come to me. So Ninja ne necessarily didn't even have to drop right there. He could have just kind of stayed back and wait for Evil Geniuses to go into the pit. It did seem like a little bit of an overzealous charge, but commonly picking up a big kill here for Renegades. Now, Sniped Ooh. Out doing some work as well. Staying alive as long as possible, but he is taken out. Let's go through the eyes of Suspector and see how he's kind of working around on this map against Renegades in yeah, this rematch. Yeah, and you could see Suspector trying to do the right thing, trying to make his way outside. Meanwhile, his teammates were kind of charging individually, but Renegades, on top of where Suspector was, kind of made it an individual charge on his part. So he needed to kind of call to his teammates, and oh, that was a huge kill Roy taking out commonly. But Evil Geniuses hasn't been able to get a good team push. They need a solid team push in order to take back these strongholds and stop the bleeding because Renegades is on fire. And we do have the new song coming up, or already up, excuse me. A lot of action down here on Pit Roy, trying to not let the hill get reset. Lunchbox is able to get over into the hill as well, but he is also taken out. And just like that, the reset goes in favor of Renegades. And let's take a look at Penguin, because everyone I pick is dying. Yeah, Penguin in a really good position to try to stop this. The Spartan Charge is going to miss. Overshield is coming up pretty soon, and I believe you said Victory X picked up that last one. What's so crazy is they got the reset on that at the same time. So whoever that was, I believe it was Roy, left the hill. There's just not enough communication coming out from the side of the Evil Geniuses. And there Ninja is with the Overshield, with the Saw, going for that triple cap. Meanwhile, Evil Geniuses is on the other side on Red Base, taking that at red base, but they're still going to be getting capped on, and Ninja's just going to continue to play aggressive with this saw. And that's a great feeling when you grab saw and you grab overshield, and then you pick up two kills, get stuck, and don't even die. Oh. It's always a great feeling, and just fantastic teamwork here from Renegades. Another triple cap coming in to the end of this game, and this is not looking pretty for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, it's going to be almost impossible mathematically for them to come back from this. They are going to take the blue base side, but unless Evil Geniuses immediately pushes out towards the pit, this one's going to be over. And as you can see, Renegades picking up kills. That's three kills now. Three people for Evil Geniuses are down, and that should be a secured victory for the side of Renegades, especially since they're over on the side, and that is going to be game one, Kyle. And that was uh, not <laughs> even remotely as, as close as I was expecting it to be. Uh, a lot of that came down to some of those overshields and saw control. Mm -hmm. You know, we did see on Evil Genius' side, Lunchbox losing that 1v1. That was a huge 1v1. But remember how I said the beginning of games are so important, especially when you have strongholds on the map, especially when there's still radar and all these things that are in play. The beginning of games have never been so important than in Halo 5, and all good teams are going to be able to capitalize on these setups hold these setups, and that's exactly what Renegades did. We never saw EG come back and get a really solid setup every time that they were able to push always Renegades in perfect position, either with the saw or with the overshield, just like you were saying. And let's take a look at some of the replays here from this map. Of course, that really early double Spartan charge coming out. Lunchbox, like this was a, an opportunity for him to really change the course of the game, but mm -hmm. he ends up getting taken out on, on the reverse end. Ninja gets stuck, stays alive. Crowd shooting, stays alive, just constantly putting in damage for his team. The momentum on your side at that point. But one of the things that I think Evil Geniuses does a really great job, they may not necessarily do it in scrims because they kind of like to bicker back and forth. Uh, Lunchbox and Roy do like brothers do about what they've done wrong. Uh, I was watching their scrims against E6 and they lost the first Strongholds game. And then all of a sudden they turned it on in Plaza Slayer and that was game two in that series. So um, I'm expecting you know Evil Geniuses to put that game behind Behind them, talk about what they knew, need to do in Plaza Slayer, and it's one of their stronger game types. I think that a lot of people learn the meta of how this game type is played from watching Evil Geniuses originally play it, collapsing on the spawns all the way back in that X Games era. Yeah, that is a good point as well. Now, Plaza Slayer, after, of course, Evil Geniuses is a team that can take a big loss and absolutely bounce back. You know, the mental fortitude of these guys, the stamina that they have is up there with the best. You can't argue that in any other fashion. These guys have been around for so long. They've been playing Halo for so many years. I'm not gonna say losing game one this badly is gonna affect them until the rest of the series. You know, if they lose this series, it's because Renegades looks like the better team. Yeah. 
definitely. And Renegades always does look so strong when it comes to these scrims that may be a little bit of disappointment when it comes to what they've actually been doing when it comes to the HCS Pro League. However, both of these teams really feel like they should be in that second or third spot when this season was beginning to start. No one would have thought that E6 or MB was the better team. It was really up to the discussion of who's going to be that second place team. Is it going to be Renegades, Envy, or is it going to be uh, EG? So, you know, maybe not in the position that they want, but that time has passed and it's time for them to focus on this series. And if you are evil geniuses, the last thing you want to do is go down two to zero. So much momentum on Ninja, on the Renegade squad. All right, now, Tom, what is, over the course of history, and of course, we've got a lot of overlap here, what was what was the series you were down the most that you can remember and I ended up bringing it back? Uh, Toronto 08, with, with Sniped Out on the team. So we were down 0-2, I believe, against the final boss team with... Uh, Neighbor. With Neighbor on it, and, you know, we ended up coming back 3-2, to two, but the thing is, we never thought that we were ever going to lose that series, and as soon as you do think that series is over, if you're down 0-2, to two, you're just shooting yourself in the foot and making it that much harder on yourself and obviously like you said the guys from evil geniuses are not willing to do that they want to fight for everything and it really comes down to are they going to be able to put it together and slay because they completely got out slayed when it came to that umpire strongholds yeah you're you're exactly correct now plaza slayer we are getting the players in the game so we'll go ahead and take a look at this map 50 kills to win of course there's going to be this is one of the maps that sometimes we don't see it go all the way to 50 kills we've got an overshield top center uh we do have players constantly controlling like S4, the top gold and hotel area. Who are you looking to kick this one off with? Um, let's kick it off with Snipe Down. He had the most kills for his team last game. He's definitely going to make his way over towards uh, that sniper rifle, but it looks like he's going to elect to go for that clamor and make his way towards the overshield instead. I believe they were able to lock that one down. That's a big kill on Ninja, getting that first strike, starting this game off right. Lunchbox, who probably did pick up that overshield, getting a kill as well. So a pretty nice start for the side of EG. They are in pretty good position to trap Renegades over in that yard area. So a nice nade comes in. That takes out Victory X, and they're in perfect position and this is what Snipe Down always does. He always makes it look so easy. The kills just kind of come towards him. They're always one shot, but that's not an easy thing to do. And there, there's a, that's like a double-edged sword as well. I'm glad you brought up that point. As a main slayer for your team, you, you always have to know like, am I, and let's just wait this play out. Okay, I almost thought it was gonna happen. You know, is it, am I always in the right position or am I kind of positioning my teammates into a bad position mm -hmm. and I'm just the one kind of cleaning up kills? So you always have to find the right balance and make sure your teammates are on the same page. It's like if you're sneaking up behind somebody that's shooting at your teammate, your teammates in a battle, do you want to, oh, I thought that was going to happen too for a that, second. That was a big kill. That was a big kill. I agree with what you're saying. Um, one thing to point out is that this game is actually going kind of slow pace. It seems like Renegades wants to kind of camp it out, but Evil Geniuses has a lot more players in blue than I think that they would like. I think the players that died ended up spawning over there. Meanwhile, I think they only have one guy at Snipe. So um, a lot slower paced game that we're actually seeing. But if I was Renegades, this is how I would be playing. I would just wait for the next overshield to come up. I wouldn't be giving any way, away any free kills like Roy is getting on to Ninja right now. So if you're going to slow it down, no one can get picked off by the Sniper. And that's the number one rule. Roy knows that, and he's going in right now. And a hat trick by Roy. He's really stepping it up this game. 11-5 uh, to five lead already. Hits another headshot. He is really on fire to start this one off. Yeah, and they said, you know what? If you guys want to camp it out, we're going to bring the fight to you. We're going to collapse on the spawns. But that was a huge kill on Victory X uh, that he missed. And Victory does get taken down by Snipe Down. But at least you took the Sniper out of Roy. But who's it going to? It's going to the guy with the weapon in his name. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> you are correct there. Snipe down back with the sniper and a quick early lead. So, I mean, we saw a dominating performance in game one. It looks like Evil Geniuses is really coming out strong here. But this map especially, we've seen them, you know, essentially blow that huge stronghold lead they had on here because it just really looked like they started to fall apart. So I wouldn't necessarily write Renegades off quite yet. Yeah, and Snipe down was in a pretty poor position. He was looking on the players that were running into the yard, but he didn't know that two players were also at the snipe side. So a little vulnerable position. I would have liked to see him maybe rotate that and try to clear out the guys towards Snipe again. I'm not sure if he was aware that those guys were there. But now the spawns have flipped and Renegades has control of the Snipe Tower. And that's pretty much what you want to be. But Snipe down with a nice flank coming up the lift. Yeah, Roy doing a great job there. Hits the player with a nade at top S4. Just sneaks across the hotel, lifts up, and then cleans up a kill. And just like that, control of Ness and the, ultimately the new Sniper that just spawned up is in favor of Evil Geniuses. So kind of a little like characteristic to allow uh, or just to 
give up control that quickly from Renegades. Yeah, whoever is able to get this sniper, it looks like that's going to be Suspector. Let's hop on board with Suspector. But Roy in a really prime position to sit there and defend him. And we saw CLG set up in Strongholds. Strongholds doesn't differ that much when it comes to your setup. Um, you may want a couple players, maybe one or two players in a different position, but it's still all about holding Ness, making sure no one can run up that loop and making sure they also don't come towards blue and towards that back wall. And Ninja staying alive for so long, just bottom of the map where three players above him actually picking up a trade as well. So Suspector looking to find a location he can take this sniper and, you know, actually zoom in and, and take some time to pick up kills. But Renegade just sneaking around everywhere. He does see a player on his radar trying to contest that, but wow, that nade came in deep. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I would rather be in Renegade's position, even though they're down two kills and Sniper Rifle was in position for Evil Geniuses. Now the game is tied and Overshield's coming up. I believe it was burned at that 44 mark. So while everyone's on spawn, that's gonna allow everyone, that was a big stick because now it trades the kills. But the thing is, is everyone from uh, Renegade should know when this Overshield's coming up and they should have the positional advantage when it comes to at least being able to burn this or at least pick it up for themselves. And Suspector grab and that sniper back for his team. Uh, commonly charging in, picks up a kill on Roy. Now he is getting collapsed on. Looks like Penguin not looking at him though. Picks up a free kill as he's focusing his attention on someone else. Commonly gets spotted out there through radar, but that storm rifle so powerful. Uh, Suspector can't really contest at this point. He's trying to wait for help, but gets taken wow. out. Wow, that was some really nice nades. I believe that that could have been a team nade that took out commonly. But the thing is, is Renegades made a little bit of a mistake. They, like I was saying, they had really good positional advantage and they had the slays on their side. They just weren't able to get that overshield. I believe Snipedown was able to pick that one up. I can't remember the exact time that he picked it up, but it was a little bit later than 45. I think it was around that 40 mark. So that was a good opportunity for Renegades with the momentum and the positioning to kind of take this one. Uh, but Evil Genius is getting some big slays. Snipedown picking up a triple kill and they have the snipe in Suspector's hands. And well, you will go ahead and hang on board with Suspector here. So you look through his eyes a little bit longer. He, in fact, is taken out again. Now, did he hand deliver that sniper too commonly? And in fact, he did. He just jumped it right up. He said, here, commonly, I don't want this, and passed that off. Yeah, I mean, how often have we seen commonly in this position kind of holding this dip area? He's obviously very, very comfortable being here. And this seems to be the position that he holds. But if he could have got that snipe onto snipe down, that would have really been a big play. Meanwhile, snipe down is making his way over towards snipe control and Ninja is spawning by the hotel. So it's going to be a battle for this snipe that's coming up in 15 seconds. Typically, 15 seconds is about the time that you want to rotate to try to get in position for these things. And it looks like EG is going to be able to do that. And we'll stay on board. Take a keep looking through Ninja's eyes here one more time as that new sniper is getting ready to spawn. You know, one of the things that I'm surprised by is even though this is a, a decent lead here for Evil Geniuses, they've had power up and control, you know, virtually all game and they just keep dying and giving it up. So Penguin grabbing a kill there. This is only a four kill game. Still anybody's, uh, you know, opportunity to take this. Ooh, that was too, a little too aggressive for Ninja. Thought he could have got that last headshot. I ended up getting team shot from the side of Evil Geniuses. If he could have got that kill and backed off, Overshield again is coming up really soon. So nobody necessarily able to fully capitalize on the mistakes being made. But like you said, Renegade's not in a bad position for not having any control for the majority of this game, not getting any of the power-ups for a majority of the game. And as you can see, had to land three snipe shots just to make that fight even with Suspector. So if they can just get themselves in a little better position, they should be fine. But it could be a little bit too late. And they're all so spread out. There's players in front of them in a great plasminade, picking up the kill on Lunchbox giving him an opportunity to push across. Now, still a four-point game. Evil Geniuses, I'm really curious to see how they want to play this one. They don't have any power weapons in control. Of course, the OS is still a long ways away from spawning again. And, you know, Renegades, they can't give up any more deaths here. Yeah, and Penguin obviously can't see that that player is there. They have the player outlines only on the spectator mode. But if you were Renegades, that's exactly what you need to be doing. You need to have a guy in hotel, just kind of like we saw earlier in the Strongholds game that uh, that CLG was doing. You want to hold these spots, these power positions. So it's uh, it's really crucial to hold these areas. So 46 to 44, uh, map positioning in the favor of Renegades. They have the sniper as well. So this is a really crucial time for nobody on Evil Geniuses to pop up. They want to kind of slow play this one. Overshield's coming up in another minute. But I love how Penguin actually moved around the map and just positioned in a different area. So they don't necessarily know exactly where he's sniping from. And that's what you want to do in a standoff. If they know where you are, you can't just sit there. You have to continually rotate. So I love the way that he's playing this one. 
And as you can see here, we had a player actually go ahead and lag out of that game. So we'll go ahead and give you an update on how we're going to be treating that. But 46 to 44 when that happens. So that is that mm. is quite a replay that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, and as you can see, all four players uh, just lagged out at the same time. It's probably because Evil Genius is all over at the same house. So really interesting um, there. But something to look at is in the beginning of the game, Obviously, EG, I believe the rules are they're going to only need four kills to win, and I think Renegade's going to need six. I believe that's what the rules are here. So when I look at the beginning of last game, Evil Genius has had that strong start. They started off, and technically, if that would be the start for the next game, they would walk away with the win. So if you're Renegades, you know, maybe... You know, just think about what Evil Geniuses did in the beginning of that last game and say, hey, where did everybody go? Where could we potentially set up to get these six kills before Evil Geniuses walks away with four in the win? Uh, you're, that's another really good point as well, because it completely changes the mindset and what you need to be doing going forward here uh, with so few kills in the game. Now, imagine if Snipedown had actually picked up that kill on Penguin when he was on blue ramp mm -hmm. there. That would have put Sniper down, but instead they were able to hang on and still have that weapon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, still had a lead in that game, but, you know, if you had to choose, you know, you brought this up earlier in that game. If you had to choose what team you wanted to be on for that replay, mm -hmm. you know, or who do you see it kind of benefiting, essentially? I think the replay a thousand percent benefits Evil Geniuses because they didn't have control. So, you know, that was a close ninja that we almost saw. Uh, ninja almost getting that one onto Snipe Down. But I think that the restart definitely favors Evil Geniuses because of the fact that they didn't have control when the game ended. Um, and slays were going in the favor of Renegades. All of Evil Geniuses was kind of camping, and they did have two people kind of um, in that corner at the shotgun area. That could have been Penguin's ticket right there. So um, because of those, I think that it definitely favors Evil Geniuses. However, I don't think that the restart is going to necessarily uh, be the deciding factor in this series by any way, shape, or form. It's kind of like uh, maybe a bad call, I guess you can say, when you're watching sports. Well, that's actually a pretty good example as well. I do like that a lot. So going into a replay here, and then, so obviously Renegades takes that first game win in a dominating fashion. Game two, now essentially we're looking at a coin flip almost in this situation yeah, here. very close to a coin flip. I can tell you what, though, if I was Evil Geniuses and I lost this game after the restart, it would be, even if it's the smallest bit of percentage, a little bit more demoralizing. You know, because it's now lengthened the series. You have a little bit more time to think about it. Um, also know that you probably know that if you're EG that they had set up. So you're like, all right, we should have the advantage going in. If you have that type of advantage and lose it, it may affect them a little bit more than uh, they would like. And, of course, they both these teams saw each other's opening strats as well. Mm -hmm. So then it comes in down to the mind game of, are we going to do the exact same opening strat? Mm -hmm. Are we going to change things up? It's just one player going to do something differently. Right. And, of course, no matter what you decide to do, it's not foolproof because the other team could also be doing the exact same thing. Right, and I think that's why it's so important to have, um, you know, someone that's analyzing this, a coach, you know, someone that's going to be able to step in that the team can believe in and say, were you paying attention to where these guys won? Because I remember when I go back and look at, you know, when we would have Lammy coach, for example, when we knew that we were playing a team, you know, at a tournament, we would say, hey, go and study these guys' beginning strats. We want to come out strong against these guys. We want to know exactly where they're going so we can kind of counter exactly what they're going to be bringing to the table. So um, the coaches need to kind of step up big here and kind of give what their input is in order to, you know, show that they, you know, what they can be that fifth player. Yeah, and big shout out to uh, Towie and Symbolic there, the coaches for these two teams. Of course, Towie joined us in the booth here for week four. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, there, there's also the case where, and this was even our situation, where we don't necessarily use our best opening strategy right. against regular teams because we knew that exact thing is happening and people right. are watching what we're trying to do. And going in practicing, we would spend a lot of time trying to figure out what is the best opening strategy here against which teams. Yeah, and you know, watching Snipe downstream and seeing what he did right there in the beginning of that game, he did the same thing twice in a row. He likes to go over there, push towards that overshield. We also saw Lunchbox swoop in, and we saw where Renegades was going too, so all of that knowledge is out there for everyone. You know, They could even be you know watching the stream if you're a coach right now. Who knows? So um, there's plenty of opportunity to go in there, and that's where the mind game's really set in. Is he really going to go there? Is he 
not going to go there? Do I go somewhere differently? So um, all of that comes from practices and situational awareness um, and also just doing all of the studying that you need to. With that being said, I wouldn't doubt if, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to be super fast or super slow to start this game. I mean, it could be a camp fest. It could take, you know, three minutes for us to get, you know, six kills or four kills. So um, I haven't been in this type of scenario where it's, you know, been a lag out so close to the end of the game. It really puts the pressure on. You're completely correct again. Uh, now, we will see a game three, obviously, no matter what happens, but even a game four now. Mm -hmm. Game three is going to be capture the flag on Fathom. How do you see this one playing out? Well, capture the flag on Fathom. When I was watching the scrims, uh, again, I've been watching a lot of scrims this week. I saw Evil Geniuses um, kind of struggle with positioning. I thought that they weren't getting top center enough. They also weren't ruthless when it came to running the flag enough. Um, maybe second them guessing themselves a little too much. So if it does come down to that, I would like to see them be really aggressive. You know, players like uh, like Commonly or, or Ryan Noob, you know, Lunchbox is the player on this team that's the most subjective oriented. These players are always just sprinting into your base and fathom because it's so you know short vertically but it's so long horizontally so it makes it really easy just to push into the pit or into the treehouse and just get into the flag and run it and that's one of the things that i feel like evil geniuses has con kind of gone away from so if anything i think that that's what they need to do they need to get all four of them including snipe down needs to go and be really dirty with that objective not second guess themselves communicate the spawns and just you know try to obviously not give up camo and railgun. Because, I mean, we've seen evil geniuses be extremely successful on this game type. We saw against Allegiance. They actually gave them their first loss on CTF Fathom. Allegiance had just been able to somehow come out and just beat everybody in that game type. And then evil geniuses put on an absolute clinic mm -hmm. of always running the, pat the map. And as soon as they hit that 50-yard line, they would drop the flag, reevaluate the situation, and then continue to you know, react accordingly. Right. We see that a lot from Counter Logic Gaming. They always take the flag over to Treehouse, mm -hmm. jump it up on that attic location there. And Evil Genius is the same kind of boat where Fly Guy drops it, jumping up in the air, shooting top center people, and then you need to make a decision at that point right. whether or not you're going to continue this one or even give it up. And if they, if you're running the flag and you don't stop running the flag and they kill you, that's an opportunity not only for you to lose that flag capture, but to get counter capped. However, if you play it correctly and you stay alive and the other team's desperating and throwing grenades, and you just live, toss the flag out, go and capture it again, that leaves another opportunity for more captures to come in because all of a sudden, everyone's going to start flying in. They start beelining it for the flag, and they start be They say, oh, flag, flag. And they just get so desperate that they just start charging it. And again, you leave yourself open to possibly you a know, having cap. a double cap. And again, the beginnings of games, so important. Can't be excited enough for this Plaza game, but also in the beginning of CTF Fathom, making sure that you aren't giving up that railgun easily, making sure that you've also done your study on knowing where certain players are coming because there's only X amount of angles that people can come um, in CTF Fathom. Typically, you see um, a one-on-one -on -one battle for the railgun. You see some popular flanks coming right through the grenades on the side, people coming around. You also see a lot of people going onto the porch, laying down shots. And then something that's pretty new is people doing that boost jump to top center, not necessarily the actual top center jump, but thrusting off of the brick and flying mm -hmm. up into the opponent treehouse from the right-hand side. So really curious to see exactly what everyone's going to be doing because, you know, from what we've seen so far in this series is the teams that have been you know winning the beginning first game CT are strongholds on empire going to renegades game two hasn't gone either way yet but evil geniuses had a lead and control for a majority of the game just because they weren't giving up control and now with this fathom ctf so evil genius is actually two and two so 50 percent win rate while renegades is one and four mm. so if you're taking a look at statistics out there definitely favoring evil geniuses for this map and especially in regards to the last time that i saw these two teams match up it was in fact evil geniuses really impressing me uh on how they were able to handle and rotate those flags but with that being said as well their capture the flag game types in general i've never seen a team all suicide more for a flag cap and give up counter caps more than I've seen from Evil Geniuses. Yeah, it's just that small talk, and it's crazy how they can be so good at actually, you know, communicating all of these things, but sometimes they just have a complete breakdown in communication, and that's where you just start playing the game and the small talk comes into your head. It's what you're telling yourself. If you're ever not thinking um, you know, about calling out or anything like that, it's kind of selfish. You never want to get into your own head and, you know, be thinking, oh man, I should have did this, I should have done that. That's times that you do that 
that when you're practicing or playing arena. This is the big boy league. This is time for everybody just to stay as focused as possible. And like you said, Evil Geniuses does have a little bit of a better record when it comes to CTF Fathom. And they do have now the advantage when it comes to this two kill lead for the restart coming up. They only need four kills. Renegades need six in this uh, player slot. <laughs> Slayer Plaza, but Renegades up 1-0 in the series. I'm not really sure which team I would like to be at this point. Well, Tom, we do have the players ready to go ahead and take a look to see what happens at the end of this game, too, and whether or not Evil Geniuses is going to tie up the series or if they're going to fall short here to Renegades. So we're starting this one off, and the beginning strategies are looking pretty similar. Again, you know, Roy did go for that overshield. Yep. Snipedown did the exact same thing. And <laughs> that looks pretty that much looks exactly what happened in the first game. I don't know if we're still watching the first game <laughs> or not, but the thing is, is Renegades didn't do anything that we were talking about when it came to adjusting their strategy. Snipe down in Roy going exactly where it was predicted. And this does kind of look like the same game as before. And it, I think actually we are going into watching the full replay. So Renegades needs six, Evil Genius just needs four. And this is, in fact, resumed. This is definitely the same game. There's no way that this, this is, is played out to be the same way. So that's a, that's an error on our part, guys. This series is not over. We are going to actually get... Uh, uh, so it looks like... And so this is, yeah, so when we join back into the game, this is the, the same replay that we are currently looking at. We'll have an update for you here in just a moment. And it looks like, so the game is ended at 50 to 45 in favor of Evil Geniuses. So they will be able to bring this one back and tie up the lead as well. So then that will send us soon to go into a Fathom Capture the Flag game. Yeah, I'm a little confused because that looked to be the same exact game from before. So we're gonna work on getting that clarified. But uh, overall, Evil Geniuses, we do have the intel that it was 50 to 45. I think we may have had an error when it came to maybe the spectator mode or something like that. But um, overall, series tied up one to one, moving into CTF Fathom, hopefully with no more lag outs. Hopefully everyone um, is gonna have a completely fair series from the rest on out. But hey, it's living up to the hype, a little bit of a hiccup. I'm expecting it to be smooth sailing from here on out. You're correct. Yeah, a little bit of it, uh, just a hiccup there in regards to the mode. But yes, we do have an update here from the players. And they did close that one out. You know, of course, just a few seconds into that game, it did not go very long whatsoever. So 50 to 45 win. Avril Genius is tying up the series one to one. And of course, we were talking about that capture the flag fathom game. And like I said, two and two record for Evil Geniuses and one and four record here for Renegades on this map. But yet never necessarily playing this game type against one another. So those records don't really mean that much. However, you can see that Evil Genius is a little bit stronger when it does come to the CTF Fathom. Um, you know, I'm predicting this game to go to a 3-2. I mean, this series is gonna be extremely close. I wouldn't doubt if it went to um, game five Slayer on Regret. And I don't know necessarily who would have the advantage when it comes to that game type i do think that if it does if it does go to game five i would probably have to give it to renegades though i, I kind of agree with you there as well um, now we have seen these teams last time they matched up it was capture the flag on cap coliseum mm -hmm. as their third game and evil geniuses was able to secure that victory three to one so as far as the the flag games overall kind of favoring as we've seen uh, as we've seen Renegades drop it several different times right. here uh, over the course of the season. Keep in mind, when they match, I believe the last series was 3-0 to zero in the favor of Evil Geniuses. Now it's just completely different. EG has not been playing to the standard that they were in the beginning. Obviously need to work the kinks out here. This is the time to do it. But Renegades, supposedly Penguin, is playing the best that he's ever played. I've seen plenty of praise on the forums. I would really like when we do kick off CTF Fathom to see what's going on with him. He's definitely very tricksy, the tricksy type of player, always staying alive and a very unpredictable person to, you know, play against. So uh, I, I want to see what he's going to bring to the table. Commonly, definitely going to be going for the objective work. Never want the railgun or camo going into the uh, hands of Ninja. So um, very 
very curious to see who's going to be able to control that top center area, but also who's going to be willing to go in and do that dirty work and get to the flag. Right now, it looks like we are getting the players set up here in the next game. Let's go ahead and take a look at Fathom. And of course, we do apologize for that little hiccup that we did have before, but we'll get this going underway. Uh, you know, you were talking about Penguin, very unorthodox player, and he's extremely successful with the power weapons. You know, in my eyes, he's one of the best at holding weapons and picking up those multi kills. You know, with this map, we've got Railgun, of course, the camo spawning top center as well. Taking a look at Penguin here through his eyes. And he's doing what I was eyes. talking about. I told you guys about the jump. He wasn't able to land it, but still puts him in front of the railgun. Is going to be able to help his teammates get this one. That's commonly. Commonly is going to avoid the team grenade and pick up that railgun. And I don't know if he was able to escape with that one, but Penguin showing great map movement, great awareness to try to get top center. And let's try to see what commonly is doing. Was he able to escape with that railgun? Commonly was able to uh, not quite escape that railgun, but he's going for a ground pound on snipe down. Snipe down actually had the railgun and missed the shot so he is ultimately taken out as well take a look at through the eyes of lunchbox here as renegades getting that fir first flag pull no one's able to kill him although lunchbox and roy on both different sides of the map and they both drop and that's what i'm talking about kyle who's gonna be the i was just talking about ninja being the aggressor when it comes to like the power weapons but he's the aggressor when it comes to the flag he pushes in there even though people are on both sides of him both of the twins he was still able to push that and be eventually the one to put that flag in, you would definitely expect him to die in that situation. And, and you, there was no clear advantage to who who won the opening strat. You know, if anything, Railgun went in the hands of Evil Genius's lunchbox. Mm. Three perfect shots there in a, in a, uh, a beam rifle versus beam rifle situation, or light rifle, excuse me, situation there. And now Evil Genius is clearly with the top mid control, but look, Commonly sneaking up behind them and helping pick up those kills. Yeah, love that flank from Commonly. It looks like Ninja is going to grab the Railgun and Battle Rifle. As I was saying before, you do not want the Railgun in Ninja's hand. He has such a high percentage when it comes to hitting these shots. Does take Lunchbox a little bit weak with that one. Is going to drop down. Probably thought he was a little bit weaker than that. Here comes the Flood from EG. There's a nice shot coming from Ninja. No, oh my no. God. The perfect oh on the snipe down. God. No shields pushing in for the flag. That was an insane play for Ninja. We're going to have to get the replay for that at the end. That was the most embarrassed I've ever seen snipe down get. By far. That was unreal. I know he is shaking his head. And at that point, that's one of the times you just hope none of your teammates saw that. But sorry, <laughs> Snipe Down, we had that on stream for everybody watching. Yeah, that was just a really nice play, a really nice crouch coming in from Ninja. Meanwhile, though, EG is making some nice pushes towards top center, commonly always playing really sneaky, trying to stay alive in that red treehouse. Meanwhile, Suspector's on his tail, trying to get him. Commonly still no shields, and there is Penguin with that Railgun. Nice team shot coming in from Renegades. Nice communication as well. And almost picking up a double gets Lunchbox weak there. Now, while he's reloading, oh, Roy Boy with, with the camo, but gets spotted. And now Snipe Down taken out as well. It's going to be all four down for just a moment. The Renegades Pretty generous collapsing spawns, though. Pretty generous spawns. They got nice split spawns there. They spawned on the elbow. They spawned in the engine as well. So not necessarily able to get in towards the flag. They did get a nice little toss out, but they weren't able to choke the spawns that they needed. And, okay, so while this flag looks like it's, oh, and he gets taken out as well. Several members dropping. We'll take a look. Nobody in position to get that return here yet. This Lunchbox, oh, able to get in on the flag That's just worth long it. enough. That's worth it for Lunchbox. Uh, Lunchbox decided he would just go. No one was going to get the return. He took it upon himself to sacrifice his life for the return. Um, but overall, the way the flow of this game is going so far, you got to hand it to Renegades. And if he can get this touch, they may be able to secure this one. It just disappears, though. And Ninja, just a, a hair short there, grabbing that flag. Now, grabbing control of the base here, several members dropping, but now it's looked like just a, a back and forth. The flag is out, however, for Renegades and Suspectors. You're gonna be able to get this pull here. Nice job by commonly laying down the shots, spotting Suspector. He needs to drop that flag. I don't think he realized that he has been spotted, and there he goes. Not gonna ground pound this one. He looks to continue to push it. Does have cover from Roy, does have cover from Snipe down. The flag, I believe, is still at home, so I'm not sure why he's taking so long to bring this one back to base. Looks like he was just getting some intel, and there it goes. He is gonna capture this one. Game tied up one to one, series tied up one to one. And just like that, what a crazy start to this game. Penguin back with the power weapons, back doing damage. Evil geniuses and he's no shield bottom center like those are one of the times where you know Do you want Roy to charge into the base or do you want him to focus on the bottom center? No shields railgun guy and it looks like it, he made the 
the kind of the wrong choice there as he drops. Penguin still has his weapon and flag is out being run and they know Lunchbox is on their flag. Yeah, nice hit marker he's gonna get with that grenade. Still looking for him. Is he gonna be able to finish this kill though? A little dipsy doodle from Lunchbox. Great job staying alive. Penguin and, still didn't finish that kill. Uh, and that was huge. He needed to get that kill. He needed to clear the guy out of the base. That was a bop if I've ever seen one before. He could have just shot the railgun into the crevice there, but he switches weapons, switches back to the railgun, misses several shots, and just like that, Evil Genius is able to take a lead two to one now. That was such a big play from Lunchbox, just staying alive. You can say that that one was calculated. However, Penguin with a little bit of a misplay there, second guessing himself a little bit longer, thinking his teammates were gonna collapse on that kill. Penguin, that was your kill to collapse on. Let's see if they can recover from that one. That, that was incredible to watch. And let's keep in mind that this was the game where uh, Ninja put the pain train down on Snipe Down. You know, if I if I had to choose, do I wanna get out BR'd, no shields, or do I wanna get ninja -ed? I would rather get ninja than get out here no shield, I think. <laughs> yeah, for sure, especially with the mechanics in Halo 5, allowing you to thrust back and get those ninjas. Uh, snipe down, picking up a kill on commonly. We haven't really seen um, much top center control being the reason why these teams have gotten the captures. Um, pretty shocked to see the mistake that did, you know, come out from Renegades. But the thing is, is Renegades has had control of this game for majority of the time. So I wouldn't be too worried if I was Penguin in these guys. I would still be playing the way that I need to be playing. And as you can see, they're not very flustered at all. Yeah, I agree here. And they're, Evil Genius is still grabbing some control, being able to push up a little bit. Penguin is likely going to be taken out here, but stays alive just a little bit longer there. So now Snipe Down is going to be grabbing this railgun, and he's looking to redeem himself as well from that embarrassing moment just a few short minutes ago here shooting a couple warning shots over there on the nice porch. nade. That was a really nice nade. I'm not really sure who threw that one, but Kamali is going to get the cleanup there. And just such a perfect um, position to be in with this railgun, getting top center. Probably didn't mean to fall, tried to do um, the ground pound to get that thrust back, but um, needs to try to get the camo because he was coming up. He could have had camo railgun and helped these guys off. So um, they were in perfect position earlier, but now it doesn't seem so. And if he could have got that kill on snipe down, that would have been three dead. Last guy alive could have been Roy, but now EG setting up a a little bit of defense, huge kill on a Victory X, four snipe downs, gonna be able to stop Commonly from pushing in. Now Commonly has to wait for the rest of his teammates to kind of come in. Probably has a guy crouching off his radar too behind him. So uh, there, there's that other player. So um, a really nice play from snipe down is gonna take down the railgun guy. I'm not sure if they are gonna be able to grab that. Let's see if Roy was able to pick up that railgun. Ninja has the camo though. All right, we'll, we'll stay on board here with Ninja for just a moment. One player drops, that's gonna be one dead here, Roy. Gets in that 1v1 battle, commits Ooh. to the challenge, and wins the 1v1. Yeah, I thought Ninja was going to go for the two-shot with the BR into the beatdown, but elects to back off probably because he had camo and thought he was going to win that battle, but didn't know he was going against Roy, who has one of the best shots all throughout Halo 2 up until now. So not the guy that you want to challenge when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one fight, but, uh, but Ninja need to play that camo just a little bit slower. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see him sit back uh, just another moment, wait, like we've seen so many times from commonly. As soon as one of your teammates dies, you need to just buy as much time as possible, prevent the other team from getting any kind of counter caps. And Ooh. Renegade's playing against the wall. Borg, or Roy there, he's, yeah, his shot's see. on He just fire. got a double. We got to go to Roy, see what he's doing. Uh, he just ended up getting taken out by Ninja. So Roy with the really nice shots. We're on board with his twin brother, Lunchbox, who ended up staying alive, forcing Penguin into that really awkward position that was able to get them the lead here and secure this cap, laying down some really nice grenades. And that's the style of Lunchbox, always staying alive, always communicating that he needs help and trying to take people with him when he goes out. And look, a lot of action happening bottom center and Penguin pushing through and challenging. He gets taken out by Lunchbox, who's now got the railgun player in his base, looking to stay alive. You don't want to lose this weapon, but several members on the nice flag pull. out. That's a really nice pull coming in from Ninja. Go wide mode, Kyle. Let's see what's going on on that right-hand side. Uh, commonly is going to get a kill on Suspector. It's really up to Roy to stop this one. So Ninja's doing exactly what you were talking about. Slow playing this one, trying to push it in. It's all tied up 2-2, two two, series 1-1. One one. Next cap will win. Three minutes left, and Ninja on a killing spree. This one could potentially go into overtime. And there's another 1v1. Ninja is also shooting extremely well today. Now grabs the light rifle, looking to take this weapon. Top center, new camo, camo still is up. 
Really nice nade coming in from Snipe Down. Ninja knows that he has to challenge that one, but Victory X getting a double kill cluster luck with the grenade. Still sprinting though, his shields are still down. Yeah, he needed to wait for his shields to come back before he continued to sprint. Wasn't expecting that player there, but either way, you can't just continue to sprint when your shields are down or your shields will never come back. Victory knows that. So a little bit of a misplay after getting that nice double kill. Either way, it should be able to reset the map and they should be able to get some sort of control. Meanwhile, Penguin crouching over to the right-hand side and a really nice stick coming in from Roy. Will he be able to get this kill onto Penguin? No. So I love how Penguin played that. He pretty much stopped the furthest person pressed up on EG, and that's what you have to do when you're that last guy alive. And I really like that Hail Mary that we just saw, throwing some Tom Brady action out here, picking up that stick, and now control, like, uh, like some couple un pretty uncharacteristic uncharacteristic mistakes from Renegades. A lot of things that you, you don't want to see happen in the Pro League when you're playing at this high of a level. Yeah, and the thing is, is they did a really great job, though, of at least staying alive and stopping the push into their base. So they were able to clear out all the members of EG. Now EG kind of on their heels while Penguin's going in there trying to get these Spartan charges. If he can get this kill on Roy, that would be no absolutely insane. Way. I can't believe that he got that kill when he was getting triple teamed. So Penguin getting two kills while everyone's fighting him on the side of Evil Geniuses and Lunchbox doing his best to at least push out and try to trade kills. I can't believe what we just saw there. That was Penguin, and in my eyes, doing something really bad. Like, hey, your last guy oh. alive. Wow, another great rail gun here. And hits oh. another shot. Victory with the double, but there are three members shooting at him. Yeah, but this is good because Roy is so far out that um, it's not really that good of a position to be with the rail gun, but he hits a ridiculous shot on the ninja. If Roy can reset and get into top center here, he should be able to get this final kill with his single shot here. And his teammates are pushing in towards the flag. So Renegade's just setting up a little defensive stance. Whoever gets the first pick is going to have a huge advantage on either side. And look, three members of Renegade's trapped in their engine and Evil Geniuses knows it. Ooh. Ninja gets taken out. This is not the situation you want to be in with a minute left in this game. And Evil Genius is about to run your flag. Yeah, commonly doing a good job of staying alive. Actually, a lot better than I thought he would do. That bought, that bought a lot of time for Renegades. Renegades was able to, I think, clear out that person in their base. Let's see where the flag is at, though. So the flag being escorted over here on the side. He does get taken out. So commonly, last guy alive in the engine, just dancing around. Nobody charged him. And all of that, you know, three or four seconds was the difference in either losing this game and going down or possibly sending it into overtime and going up in the series. Yeah, you can't hope for a better advantage than map control, 3v4 situation, and all three guys kind of like weak hiding in one base. And just like that, uh, Renegades clutches up that situation now. 20 seconds left in the regulation on this time, but we will go to overtime should no one put a flag in yet. So we still got a couple minutes for these two teams to battle it out here. Some really crispy shots coming down from Snipe Down onto Victory X. But this is one of the things I see Snipe Down do a lot that I'm not a really big fan of, is he's always pushing into the enemy team's um, silo, which isn't necessarily where you want to be. You want to be pretty much in, the, in their treehouse and pushing into their elbow and choking the engine. So you want them to spawn silo, you want to be top center, and that's one of the things that I see him doing just a little bit too often, and it kind of comes back to bite his team in the butt. It looks like several members from both teams dropping, but Penguin so aggressive here, pushes in, see two members on porch, tries to get the flag out as far as, far, uh, far as possible here, but too many members of Evil Geniuses are going to yeah. quickly put that one back. I mean, it seemed like a good play looking from Penguin's point of view. In hindsight, though, if you were just to actually toss that flag out, and maybe if he had a nade or something like that, he could have baited those players and waited for help for just a second or two, and that could have potentially saved the capture because it's always a really rewarding experience when you're in their base and also your teammates are picking up kills at the same time. So Penguin, a little bit lost opportunity for Renegades, but the map pretty much still in Renegades' favor. And so many members of Renegades, no shields, but they're staying alive just long enough watching this battle, top center, bunch of members dropping around, dying left and right. Penguin still alive, has that light rifle, putting shots down, but he's running out of ammo. You gotta reload, bro. Yeah, so only a couple shots left. He realizes that he's going to switch over to his pistol, but a really prime position to be in and still just being so sneaky. However, Snipe Down's on his case. Really nice splinter grenade in the window is going to take him out. And Lunchbox, let's see what he's doing. He's pushing into the base, but has three people on him. So, um, you know, overtime, still a minute and 40 seconds left. It looks like Renegades has a little bit of an advantage here when it comes to pushing in. Let's see what they're doing. Let's hop on board with Commonly, who's top center. That camo is up, so he's trying to stay alive, potentially getting that 
back smack on someone, but Ninja falls off the map. That's huge. And Snipe down getting dirty with the objective, running in and getting a toss. So let's see what's going on with this flag. It looks like Victory X is going to be able to get the return. So um, Snipe down may or may not be listening to the cast, but that's what I like to see from him. I like to see him going in for the flag and being aggressive instead of potentially looking for the slays all the time because with a minute left, it could just be someone just going in and running a flag when you're least expecting it. And now we only do have now one minute left in this game. Players dropping left. left and right. You see a double kill coming out from Penguin Triple here. from Penguin. Is he going to be able to get the overkill? No, he gets taken out by Roy. So really nice job coming from Penguin. Um, Meanwhile, Victory X is pushing towards this blue treehouse. So uh, nice trade and kills here. No one really in position. Someone's going to almost have to desperate it at this point if they really want to get a flag capture. But it doesn't take that long to actually run it across the map. In Fathom, takes about 10 seconds. So this one far from over. Someone could potentially get it. But it looks like commonly wants to elect to play defense. Ninja wants to play defense. Looks like they are just going to set up at their base and try to go for the tie, which isn't necessarily a bad play because overall, I would have to give it to Renegades even though this game was tied they had map control i would say at least 65 70 percent of this game yeah I, I agree with you there as well 10 seconds left in this game it looks like no one will be able to put in the last cap so we will be having uh you know some sort of a replay just not enough time to move that across the map here so now it's just time pad your stats sit back relax and get ready refocus for this next game take a look at some of the stats here as well uh, what was going on it looks like on the evil geniuses side the three core members essentially playing extremely well even three flag returns from lunchbox and suspector falling a little short here or is struggling as far as the kills go yeah what's really interesting is when you look at the flag captures too though ninja with two and commonly is typically known as their objective player uh, i would say ninja is probably the player most likely on renegades to go for slays so he not only brought it to the table when it came to the kills, he also brought it to the table when it came to running to the objective. And without Ninja kind of getting into the base, obviously with the support from his teammates, there's no way that this game would have been tied up two to two. Here's another good valid point as well. Now I want to give you some updates here of what's going on now. This will be a full replay game three capture the flag. So back to zero, zero, first to three caps win. Of course, it can also go back into overshield again, should it need to. Now, another point here, and thanks to Halo 5 Arena as well for giving us that information. Game two was not 50 to 45. It was 50 to 49 in wow. favor of Evil Geniuses. Wow, that was intense. So sorry that we missed that one, but thank you guys at Halo 5 Arena for providing the stats on that one. And this series couldn't get any closer. Tied up one to one, going into game three, which was tied two to two. So uh, not next capture wins, it is a full replay. And again, if you're Renegades, I'd be feeling pretty good because as we were saying, Evil Geniuses, this is one of their stronger game types. But yeah, everyone, every time we switch to, over to Renegades, they're always making the right plays. So, um, you know, Spectre didn't get as many kills as he would have liked. Curious to see if he's going to turn around. That could be a little bit of an X factor if he maybe steps it up a little bit more individually um, to where he believes he should be playing and where we all believe he should be playing in the Slay department. Then that could give Evil Geniuses the advantage they need. And this is starting to look a lot like that first matchup, Evil Geniuses versus Envious, when it was like a 3-0 in favor of, of Evil, or excuse me, Envious, but the games were just ridiculously close. So in that game three, Fathom Capture of Light. The exception of this, obviously, Empire Strongholds, that was a domination by Renegades. That, like, that Fathom CTF and that Plaza Slayer just doesn't get any closer than that. Yeah, and what's interesting is we didn't really see anyone utilizing the camo up to its full potential like we see a lot of these players do. So if anyone's able to maybe, we saw a lot of great railgun plays, but we didn't see a lot of great camo plays. So if anyone could get in position with camo railgun, maybe camo BR, or at least make the uh, camo useful by getting into the flag, that could be another way we see one of these teams separate themselves from being in a tie. I agree as well. Now, we do have the players ready for this replay. Let's go ahead and take a look at Fathom CTF once again and see exactly how this map is going to play out the second time around, see what kind of strategies these players are looking to kind of change up yeah. here. 
I mean, strategically, we've discussed a lot of it. I think that the main thing that we can take away, at least from watching that um, last game, is the amount of defense that these guys have. There's so many times that these guys are just setting up and um, waiting to get the picks. And that's what you really need to do. You need to clear the guys out of your base. And we're already hopping into this game. The players are ready. Looks like Penguin is making his way over towards top seven. All right, it looks like the test for bottom mid trying to get that rail gun is back and forth and lunchbox picks up the double kill gets that rail gun and perfect direct hit on victory x beginning of this game evil genius is coming out hot yeah and it's so important like i was saying that come out with that hot start lunchbox does does end up choking the spawns and this is what we were saying too is that now they're going to just set up defensively and that's what i like to see i like to see lunchbox okay i need to let them spawn silo i'm going to back off here and get some different type of angles because what are you going to do on the floor from that point not nearly as much as you would from this height advantage so you're a lot less vulnerable but the thing is is you do have to watch your back and your teammates can't all die pushing towards the flag and now ninja sees that wants to push in towards the flag lunchbox Box saying no you did that way too much last game so really heads up play there coming from lunchbox last guy live now picking up two kills Kyle and not only that but he did throw a little bit of a team name to his twin brother there Roy saying here I'm just gonna put you a little bit of a disadvantage going into this <laughs> fight but good luck anyways uh, but he is able to kind of redeem himself here stays live and Ooh, wow ninja fighting two players I can't believe that didn't shoot the railgun and now three players fall for Evil Geniuses. And what you saw on the death screen there from EG is just the ruthlessness when it comes to running the flag. And look at Ninja Go, just constantly running it. Victory X a little out of position. He was choking the spawns, but he should have been possibly on the porch to lay down fire on the guys that were in the silo. And if he did that, then this flag would have been out a lot further. But here's the thing, it's still sitting there. No one's even gone for the return. So there it is, finally, I believe that was Lunchbox getting that return. To me, that's a little too long if you're Evil Geniuses for that flag. To sit there. And that was a great job here by Evil Geniuses. Had some good advantages and, and picked up a clean return, but they weren't really able to capitalize. They pushed the treehouse, picked up another kill. Roy did get a good trade with that uh, sticky grenade he threw out there at the end, but still nobody able to really get into the opponent's bases and actually get those flag pulls. Yeah, and Penguin with that failed jump there. If you guys didn't know, you can jump onto that ledge and then go back over towards the bridge to make your way top center. He was going for that jump because of the fact that the weapons were coming up soon. As you can see, the Spectre picking up that railgun. Camo's coming up very shortly, if not already up. So a little bit of a misplay. Cost Penguin his life. And now it's a Spectre going to try to capitalize on that with this railgun. Trying to clear out whoever's at his base. That's commonly. So really nice job of commonly bringing this railgun guy all the way back to his base. This is pretty much the exact opposite side of the map that you want to be with it. I agreed as well. Now still in the base. Now I can't believe he's getting over there so quickly. Renegade's already able to collapse again. Evil Genius is not able to push mm. out. Just so many grenades being thrown in. And Suspector just needed to not even worry about that. He could have gotten such a better position with the railgun. That's going to be four fresh dead. It looks like they're running this flag super fast. That's going to be victory esque going bottom center with this one. Curious to see if anyone from Evil Z Geniuses is in position to stop this. Had to clamor up there. And that will be the first cap going over to Renegades. Victory X putting that one in. Love the way Renegades secured that cap. That was a quick one to get this game started as well. Evil Geniuses now really on their hind foot. Now stipe down with that Railgun, got to pick up one. Now That's grabs two. a quick double kill. This is a good opportunity to pull a flag. See, this you is where he pull takes too long. He takes too long sometimes to pull the flag, looking for the clip, looking for the triple, looking for the slays. He could have already been up there with the flag, already been still alive running this thing, but he was looking for those kills, responding to a call out. He needs to forget about those call outs and just run the flag. And Victory X trying to contest, focus on this return. Only two members of Evil Genius is left. They are nice throwing nade. in nades. Nice nade. Yeah, Victory X. Oh, oh Lunchbox isn't going to be able to get it. He does get the touch, I believe. So, yeah, he does get the touch. Victory X maybe could have waited for his shields just a little bit longer. Looks like they're going to try to train this one in. No one in Renegade's really in position to stop this one. So, they're going to try to just get top to center control and give this one up. That's the Spectre throwing it down. Snipe down, getting the flag assist at the same time and almost gets Ninja Penguin with a really nice job of getting that trade when he was already no shields from Snipe Down. Yeah, I honestly don't even know what just happened in that situation. It looked like Snipe Down shot him three times and Melee must have missed the shot there. So he wasn't mm -hmm. able to pick up the kill and then it looked like Penguin ninja him, but then, then it didn't him. give him ninjas <laughs> and then he gets the sticks. A lot of action happening there on the porch, but regardless, still 1-1 one, one in this game. Already almost halfway through once again. New camo is up at this very moment. Commonly looks like he's in best position to grab that. So let's go on board with him. He is able to pick it up.
up taking no shields very quickly wow, and has to run to his base. He decides to thrust when he's no shields there. I do like that play because it is going to keep him alive. However, he's not really in the best position again at his base. So he's going to want to try to get his way out of there, try to play a little bit of defense here. Gets the nice back back on Suspector. Has to challenge this one. Really nice use of thrust by both players. So just going to reset with the camo, slow playing it. I like it as you can see in the top left area and towards the middle, you can see how much of his camo is left. I would say about one fourth remaining 25% on his camo, and he still hasn't necessarily been able to push out of his base. So you can see the uh, amount of aggression from Evil Geniuses was just too much, but good thing Commonly had that camo so they could stop the EG push. And another great shot by Commonly. Using that last shot there in that chamber to get the kill. He is pushing up. Lunchbox also has a light rifle, but top center light rifle, you're just able to put off so much damage. You got one member dying, soon to be a second member if they can clean up this kill on Snipe Down. Yep. All of the Renegades starting to collapse here in on the base. Almost kills Ninja. Suspector, last guy trying to contest this. Unable to pick up the kill. Now Lunchbox is in their base and Roy is quickly flanking as well. He drops. Let's go to Y mode. Roy is the last one in position. Although Commonly is getting melted from behind. Nice He's play. able to stay alive and throws that such, flag out. Such a smart play. Such great communication. Also a nice job, Kyle, going in the Y mode so we can see where everybody is at. And that's just perfect execution when it comes to just slow playing a cap like you were talking about. Not having to desperate it. And let's see if that opens up the rest of the map now because now Evil Genius is desperate a little bit that's going to leave them vulnerable at their flag and it looks like he is able to get a melee here let's just watch his death cam snipe down is taken out by uh, victory x there as well so we go ahead and hop on board with him look through his eyes see what's going on he grabs a new battle rifle it's so important to just grab every weapon on this map everyone on the map it just it contributes to the advantages your team can grab and just especially in those long range battles and i like how he didn't decide just to push in immediately decides to get the battle rifle and back off he doesn't have any idea that that player was camping right there around the corner that's snipe down so a really good play by snipe down but a good play by both players he decided i want to go around and get the angles i already know that they're sitting at the flag so why don't i just back off and let them kind of push out towards us and get the picks. Unfortunately, didn't work out for Renegades fans in their favor, but just a really nice play by Snipe down just to crouch off radar and counter that. And then commonly throwing some nades, unable to quite make it all the way up there with that grenade. Might need to hit the gym a little bit more, <laughs> but still sitting on his back with this light rifle. It is so powerful. He's got another player opposite side of him who gets taken out. That's Suspector with the railgun. We'll see what Conley's able to do. He stayed Such alive nice so movement. well before. Oh man, just totally outplayed Snipe Down at that point. He left Snipe Down, went over towards the porch, finished up the kill, listened to his call out onto Lunchbox, and then turned back around and took down Snipe Down, who was trying to Spartan charge him. So, you know, he could have easily played that so many different ways, but there was almost no better way to play that than Commonly did. Can't say enough about that play. 100% agree. He created a numbers advantage when his team did not have a numbers right. advantage. However, EG going in, getting the kills that they need, and look at Roy already backing up towards the garage, waiting for players to desperate towards that flag, but it is going to be two against one. That's going to be Ninja uh, helping Commonly get that kill. However, Lunchbox's twin brother trying to come back and prevent Ninja from getting this flag pull, and it looks like the flag is down. He's no shields. Another player spawning on the engine. I'm curious to see if Penguin's going to be able to get this kill. Looks like he's going to be able to get this kill. Ninja says, I'm not going to get the return. I'm going to run this one, so someone messed up for EG. I'm not sure who it was to secure that cap, and now it looks like Renegades is in that same position that EG was running this last flag. Let's see if Renegades is able to capitalize this take this one down but they're dying as well and he just drops so quickly it looked like it was going to be a counter cap but does not look like to be the case anymore they are not able to get the return yet and now commonly with the rail gun see uh, camo is coming up eyes. soon so i'm curious to see if he's going to go for the kills here or if he's going to go for that camo it looks like roy a little bit out of position here uh if roy can take up uh commonly a little bit weak that'd be nice for his teammates but commonly going to wait for his shields let's see what's going on with camo i'm not sure if lunchbox has that or not, but Snipe Down making his way, lands a nice uh, grenade onto Penguin, which is going to take him out, and there's the camo guy right there. That's going to be Lunchbox. He also has someone that's helping him inside that pit. Meanwhile, Snipe Down trying to get some help from that porch side, so advantage over to EG so far. However, their camo guy did die. Snipe Down dies as well, and Kamali is going to take out Roy. That means the last guy alive is the flag guy who's over there crouching. That's going to be Suspector. Meanwhile, everybody that just died spawning on the elbow. That's a killing spree for Kamali, and they're in really great position, Kyle, to get this potential
a flag return. And commonly is leading this charge. I uh, can't tell if he got that player weak. It looks like he is, in fact, no shields on the flag. Penguin is in the base as well. The oh, Spartan charge gosh. doesn't hit. He has taken out Victory X, just fallen a little bit short there, and now they have to reset. Here's the thing, Kyle. There's two and a half minutes left. If Renegades can hold this uh, setup where it's just a standoff the entire time, the time is actually going to run out because it's not overtime when your flag's out of the base. So keep in mind, if Renegades um, continues to hold this, that they will end up winning the game 2-1. to one. EG needs this flag return if they want to win this game. Great point, as it's been a little bit different over the course of different Halos over the years, but that is what we are looking for, looking at with Halo 5's overtime rolls here now. Uh, they, if they continue this standoff for the remaining time, they will, in fact, secure the victory with both flags still out. Yeah, and Suspector, you know, if the if the game continues like this, he may want to even consider dropping the flag and saying, hey, someone that spawns, you go and take, you know, the flag. I'm going to go and push because we don't actually have much time. We really need this return. So um, there comes a point in time where, you know, you can shoot with the flag in your hand in Halo 5. Do you decide that I'm just going to sit at the base and trust my teammates to finish this out in a minute and a half and get the return? Or do wanna, I want to get a little bit aggressive and push out? Sort of like what he's doing right there, getting that killing spree with the flag in his hand. However, the you know the side of renegades they still have the flag at their base and there's only a minute 20 seconds left i would love to see him move this flag out this is an all or nothing situation for the evil geniuses you need to use all your advantage you need to pull the goalie out in order yeah. to go and get this return yep. and they need to do it now because only a minute left yeah and that nade wasn't really necessary because it just showed where the flag was and it didn't hit so um you know he's going over into this position but it's not necessarily the position that he needs to be however snipe down getting the return and the fact that suspector rotated that may allow them to kind of get a pull for Renegades. So let's see if anyone from Renegades is going to be able to get the pull. Looks like they have camo in the hands of Penguin, and the flag is going to get captured. So that is two to two. Snipe down. Huge job. Nice job getting that return with the railgun. Renegades only needed to hold off for 40 more seconds, Kyle. And just like that, that's a heartbreaking kind of falling uh, a victim to that return. They. they Probably, you know, trying to switch up their play style to something they're not as quite familiar with ultimately can result in a misplay and, and a flag return. Suspector, great positioning here, cutting off an angle he's getting shot at while still laying down shots on Victory X. But Victory X, great job of backing down, staying alive. And just like that, the teamwork from Renegades is on point. Yeah, Renegades in a really good position. They definitely have the top center control. However, Lunchbox getting that big kill towards the elbow, too, at the same time. Penguin almost thrusting off the map. And this one is going over to overtime. Renegades in a good position to try to take this one. However, Suspector saying no, crouching in the engine. So a really nice heads up play by a bunch of players. Let's take a look at the stats really quick, Kyle, and just see who's where when it comes to the kills. So uh, taking a look at the kills pretty even across the board against Suspector, you know, not uh, having as many slays as he would like, but does have two captures. All right. And well, it's a good, interesting facts here. And I can't believe we're already in overtime of the second game in a 2v2 situation. And Renegades, as you can, you can see in the kill feed, there are two members dropping. However, they are all stuck in their base right now. They do have the opportunity to push out, but no opportunity for a flag grant. Snipe down, spawning up right in front of Victory X. Almost gets taken out instantly. Great grenade here from Evil Geniuses as well. Just over two minutes left in this game. And as you can see, they really value coming back to their base and clearing people out. I would say Evil Geniuses is, um, is one of the masters of doing that, making sure that they do set up and get the picks um, and playing the numbers game. That's what Evil Geniuses and Lunchbox always just preach. Numbers, we had numbers, we had numbers. So um, love the fact that they went back and cleared that guy out. However, no one's necessarily established full map control um, when it comes to getting this camo and getting this railgun. And Suspector trying to fight, Ooh. gets a ground pound on Victory, who gets embarrassed in that situation. That's not what you want to have happen to I, you. I believe Snipe Down just picked up the camo. It looks like he did get hunted down, though, by Penguin. So let's hop on board with someone from Renegades. It looks like we're on board with Ninja right now. He's laying down the shots onto Roy. Nice shot behind the wall is going to allow his teammate to live. So Ninja's going to make his way towards the top center. That's Penguin that he's helping out over there and taking down Snipe Down, too. So uh, love the fact that Ninja helped his teammate and is pushing aggressively towards the flag without any hes hesitation and nailing a sick grenade at the same time. So here's the opportunity for Renegades. Let's see if they can capitalize. And Penguin gets taken out. Just players dropping left and right. Still <laughs> squared. Are we going to see another overtime here? <laughs> or like another replay? <laughs> it could I mean, be another replay. A little disrespect oh. over there going towards Snipe Down's body. Commonly, you only have one more minute, though, before this game ends. So may want to push out of the base. That's going to be Lunchbox. High 
hiding over there towards where the old splinter grenades used to spawn. And it looks like Ninja getting a kill as well. So potential pull here coming out for the side of Renegades, but no, it looks like no one's at the flag. So potentially going into another replay of this game, and I wouldn't expect any less Kyle for our match of the week. I know. What are we tied at 4-4 right now in a best <laughs> in a first to three flag captures? This game is ridiculous. This is the match of the season for these two teams, like we said before it started, and everybody's leaving everything on the line here. Yeah, and I can't say that this game has been in anyone's favor, kind of like how the first game of CCF Fathom was definitely going in the side of Renegades. It seemed like Snipedown was really being a nuisance, you know, getting that flag return, also doing a really great job of staying alive. And sometimes people just go into that, I'm not losing mode. You know, if we go down two to one in this series, in the most important series of our HCS Pro League career, it could be detrimental to our team. So everyone's stepping up what they need to and taking a look at the kills commonly going huge with the slays. So now how does this, now what I'm really curious about is how is this gonna play affect in these players kill death assist ratios because i mean if you're adding up all three and including these ties these players are going to hit 100 kills this game <laughs> pretty much kyle i'm thinking about who's going to win the game you're thinking about the stats so <laughs> <laughs> always go for the montage clips tom <laughs> true but overall i just think that these guys are so evenly matched that i don't even know how the rest of this series is going to go like i thought numerous times when evil geniuses kind of choked on that cap Renegades decided to counter cap, then there was a counter to the counter cap, it just became absolutely crazy, and then we see plays like that. I love that. A counter to the counter cap, as you hear here from T squared. Counter squared. Counter squared, exactly. Now, that is quite, I mean, I'm just absolutely amazed at what we just saw. I cannot believe that we're potentially, we're going into a third for replay. I mean, we've seen stuff this like this five, in the past. But it's still game three. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. And for, like, both these teams, neither one of them like struggle getting control and actually putting in a flag. This is just, you know, one of those battle of the Titans back and yeah. forth. Neither team able to really pull a clear advantage. Yeah, I really look at, like I said, the counters to the counters there. That was definitely Evil Genius's cap. They had the original cap. Renegades stopped them. Renegades had the fresh four dead. They ran that flag bottom center. So maybe a little bit of a misplay, you know, and sometimes you, you, you know, want to run it really fast and think that that's the right play, but um, Evil Genius is able to get that return and then snipe down, really clutching it in that last minute. You know, it was definitely in Renegade's favor at that point. They could have walked away with it. Um, a little bit demoralizing, but still, you know, nothing to be ashamed of when you're putting up this good of a show. I couldn't agree more. And then not only that, or with that being said as well, the the level of effort that these teams are having to put in. This is the amount of hours you need to concentrate at 110%, mm -hmm. calling out nonstop, putting forth all of your effort. This starts to take a toll on you, you know, going into the future as well. We know we do have the players ready here for our now third replay on Fathom CTF. Let's go ahead and take a look here and jump on board and see who is gonna get this one started. We'll, we'll with suspect they're here. Just, it, I am gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind if we see another replay of what we just saw these last two games. <laughs> I love how Suspector's playing this one. That's what I used to do uh, on my teams when I would go and push out towards that BR and go towards top center. The railgun obviously used to be there, but now it's the camouflage, so you can't grenade the railgun back to you and you can't grenade the camo towards you at the same time. So Suspector playing that one pretty much perfectly, laying down the grenades, getting that camouflage, and now pushing in towards Ninja, who's gonna be trying to get that ground pound, but he gets taken out. So so everyone's setting up defensive stance, stances here. EG looking so strong to start this game, Kyle. They are taking a clear advantage here off the start, especially with the help of that camo. Now, is he going to be able to live? He, in fact, does get that flag across. You see Roy's got the railgun. Several members here uh, dying for Renegades. We're just going to hop Y mode real quick, take a look. Nobody is going to be in position to stop this one. Some great grenades, however, but with rail uh, going over now, and they're going to put that one in. And of course, that was commonly, who now just grabbed a kill on Suspector. Big 1v1 victory against Ninja. Yeah, Suspector hasn't even died this game. Gets the capture, gets the camo, still making plays. And look at Roy now. Roy pushing in towards the base. So EG looking like a different team than these first two games, being extremely objective oriented, just getting extremely dirty commonly with some really nice shots. I think he almost picked up that triple kill there. So um, EG looking like a new team when it comes to just pushing in and getting um, towards that flag. And 
also, I don't think this one's been returned quite yet. So there it is. They finally get the return. And sniped out quickly, working on a flank. He is going to run into a 1v1. Actually gets start, starts getting shot at. Several members of Renegades coming back to collapse. That's one of those times where, you know, sniped out thought he was going to get a good flank on. But what he actually ended up doing was putting his whole team in a disadvantage. And now they have to reset and allow him to respawn. Yeah, and someone has to end up getting this top center control ASAP because of the fact that Camo and Railgun are coming up. It looks like that's going to be Roy Bork sitting there camping towards the bottom, waiting on that Railgun. But sometimes it's best just to get above that guy and drop on that guy. So I'm shocked to see none of these players have done the jump towards top center to try to get that type of control. Um, Roy does walk away with the Railgun, so that's a win for the side of Evil Geniuses. And there he is making his way towards top center like he should be. And I was really impressed with commonly shots, picking up that 1v1 kill on Lunchbox, who actually had the clear advantage. Kind of an outplay, in my opinion, here by Commonly. Roy with the railgun misses a couple shots. Ooh. Wow, and Lucky, uh, I don't think if he hit that melee, if Penguin hit that melee, was going to take him out. But nonetheless, having some more shields in case you do get shot one extra time by someone else on the team always helps out. Ninja picking up two kills is pretty big because that kind of stops Roy's camo railgun. Yeah, he's going to be able to pick up kills, but it's kind of just going to be a trade since Ninja got those two kills. So it uh, looks like Roy going to make his way towards the flag. It's spotted out by commonly, so it's going to be really hard for Roy to survive. However, he still does have about 10 seconds left on that camouflage. Everyone kind of collapsing on him and he's just trying to stay alive as long as he can. While he's doing that, that's buying his teammates to push, uh, time to push in and try to get top center. So a uh, nice job by Roy and uh, a nice job by Lunchbox following up. However, not much that you can do uh, when Renegades is falling back perfectly and playing good defense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the first time that Evil Geniuses has actually put in the first flag capture out of these two replays. Right. So this might be the final turning point that we see, you know, and whether or not Evil Geniuses is stepping it up or Renegades is starting to get a little burnt out, you know, we don't exactly know, but regardless, different change of pace than what we've seen in the last Yeah, game. definitely a change of pace. I was going to say, while he had that camo railgun before Ninja picked up the kills, that it was the first time we've seen clear map control and a lead from anybody on this game type so far. So, um, you know, the first replay, Renegade's definitely looking pretty strong. Um, you know, they had the chance to win it in that last minute. However, EG looking like a completely new team. It seems like we've switched over to a couple players and they've had killing sprees so far. So, um, Roy, again, same spot. Crouching, waiting bottom center for that railgun. Does have a player above him, so a little bit concerned. Penguin has no idea. Looks like he gets the melee onto Roy, but Roy's gonna pick up that railgun. However, Ninja over there with Kamali taking him out at the same time. So looks like Kamali's gonna swoop up that railgun. Probably gonna try to get some sort of top center control here. Lunchbox crouching around the corner. Let's see if he knows that he's there. Lunchbox definitely has him on the radar. Gonna take him down to no shields. His teammates are looking for him. I think he may have been able to burn the camo. So really nice job at least burning that, but Lunchbox in really great position to make a sneaky little play. Yeah, I, I do like his decision there. He was no shields top center. It's just a, such an exposed area on the map. I like that he went for the camo burn there because it just looked like if he didn't, it was going to go in the hands of the people geniuses. Yeah, I think Snipedown would have got free camo railgun there when he pretty much just jumped up to top center. That's a pretty nice present, but he's doing a good job staying alive. However, his flag has been pulled, and Victory X doing a really nice job thrusting past that railgun, coming back with the light rifle, getting the shots onto Snipedown, and Snipedown's flag is still out. Looks like Suspector is the only guy to be able to try to play defense, and Victory X, that play was absolutely yeah. Insane on Snipe Down. That was the mind games there. He's sitting all the way back to the wall. Uh, Snipe Down thinks he's going to peek out and he'll get the headshot, but he misses the railgun. Victory X commits to a challenge on him while after shooting one of his teammates and he just catches Snipe Down off spawn again. Not only does Snipe Down miss the opportunity for that kill, but he gets punished for it again off his of spawn. Yeah, EG, you know gave up that cap, but at least they stopped the bleeding there. The thing is, is Renegades was so ruthless, Penguin was already in position to run another flag, and Victory X is going off with the railgun. So that would have been a huge opportunity for Renegades to continue to try to push their advantage. However, EG really great at just getting the picks and playing that numbers game. And several members dropping here. Looks like we have three down for Evil Genius. Is taking a look quickly at some of the kills here. Go back on board, see what Renegades has in store. Now this game is all tied up one to one. 
and we are slowly starting to look like what we just saw for the last oh. 25 minutes of these kids running around on Fat. Yeah, and that was advantage towards Snipe down in that fight. He had him on the radar. Ninja had no idea if he would have been able to. Oh, he misses the flag, though. That could have been a pretty big hiccup. However, Ninja pushing this flag. Three people for EG are down. So this could be that flag capture that puts him up two to one in uh, this game. Camo, Railgun are on the board here. So um, this is a really big capture and also really big that you try to at least stop the push here coming in from EG because of the fact that all the weapons were up. So Roy decides that he wants to get the weapons. Maybe they decide to give that capture up and just try to counter it. But it looks like Penguin in some pretty nice position as well to try to distract everybody from evil geniuses. Gets a pretty big kill. If he can land that melee, he does. That's two kills. Penguin going huge. And I cannot believe that we just went from two players collapsing on Penguin to seeing Penguin pick up a double kill because he turned away just at the wrong time where the evil geniuses did. So the flag is out here for Sight down, he gets taken out. That's gonna be a return, and now the possible new flag. Possible counter cap, Kyle, possible counter cap. That's two people only alive for Evil Geniuses now. And it looks like everybody is gonna be spawning back up. One member goes down, constant back and forth battles now. Nobody in position to run this flag. They need to be really careful not to oh suicide Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Oh, I thought Common Lee was gonna shoot the box down and not allow that flag return to happen. However, whoever got that return, I think it was Snipe Down, just sneakily got in there at the perfect time and that one got returned. I thought that would've been a really great opportunity for Renegades to try to push this one here. However, Ninja just being such a nuisance at the base has help from Victory X. They're pulling this one. Lunchbox, last guy alive on the porch. A teammate does hit Ninja, but he's in really great position. They should be spawning over towards the silo. Ninja knows that. He's coming in with the flank. Big on one-on-one -on -one right now with Roy. Roy's going to win that one. Is anyone from EG going to be able to get a pull? Looks like they have really great defense from the side of Renegades. I think they're going to be able to put this one in and take it. That's going to be CTF Fathom, the third replay, going over to Renegades. They are in the lead in the series 2-1, to one, Kyle. And... What a fantastic play. That came down to the power up at the end of the map. Ninja being such a nuisance and distraction, hiding in Evil Genius's engine area. And when they finally got the numbers advantage and collapsed on him, he had backed up at the perfect moment and they did not spot his camo. He picks up a free kill, stays alive, assists on another kill, and secured the victory here for Renegades. We, we saw a lot of great teamwork, but we saw a lot of great individual plays. That play from Ninja that you're talking about, as we see Suspector putting in this capture here. But how about that play that Victory X had on the railgun guy, I believe that was sniped down. So uh, out of all these three CTF Fathom plays, we saw almost an entire montage. There were some insane plays here. Um, lots of outplays and and if anything, kind of a lot of mistakes being made as well, whether or not it's communication wise. If you're if you have a line of sight on a no shields player, you know, you, you need to change what you're doing. You need to refocus mm -hmm. and, and at least just give that a little bit of attention. You know, there's something like status quo or, you know, Optic Gaming has done really well in the past is finishing off those kills, mm -hmm. but they just weren't able to do so. So whether or not there was just too much communication going on in the game and things start to get covered up right. or or the players just aren't calling it out necessarily, there that, that could have gone a lot differently, <laughs> or AKA those first two games mm -hmm. could have gone differently as well. Yeah, I think that you said that the mistakes, mistakes did happen, but Renegade's able to capitalize on the mistakes. Meanwhile, Evil Genius is not really able to capitalize on the mistakes that Renegade's were making. So overall, it's just a two to one now in the favor of Renegade's moving into Plaza Strongholds. Kyle, do you have any predictions for the way that this one's gonna play out? And it is two to one. We're heading into game six now. <laughs> and RK just game four, Plaza Strongholds. Now let's keep in mind, Tom, that this was the game that we saw Evil Genius's blow that 60 point lead 98 to 38 against Allegiance when Heinz was going yeah. on an absolute tear. But we also saw Allegiance take down Renegades on this game type as well at the same time. Uh, Rami getting that killing frenzy, getting that triple kill with the stick and two shotgun kills. So both of these teams with a little chip on their shoulder when it comes to Plaza Strongholds. And again, it's just gonna be the beginning strategy is so important. Obviously, EG got off to that great start and about capitalizing on the mistakes, making sure that you control that camo as much as possible. And um, I believe the players are ready. So we, we're gonna be getting into this one very shortly. Kyle, who do you wanna see on this one? 
you know, we saw a lot of things from a lot of people in that game, but I was almost most impressed by Victory X. Yeah. So let's take a look at Victory X. He just, his map movement, his in-game knowledge of just trying to outsmart players is so impressive. So we'll start on, take a, you know, start off taking a look at Victory X and what he can do now on this new Strongholds game. So it looks like they're going to try to double cap this yard. Uh, it looks like a single cap actually while someone else is going top yellow. So very interesting that Renegades actually does want to capture the yard in the beginning. Meanwhile, Evil Genius is going over towards that nest. It looks like a big fight for Snipe Down going on against uh, Ninja. He does take Snipe Down to one shot and it looks like Victory X trying to get this reset before Roy gets over there. Is he able to get the reset? He does. So really heads up move and really nice shots coming out from Victory X on to Roy. That was huge because they got bottom middle, they got yard, they're scoring points, and that nest is still available. So prime position to start the game for Renegades. I can't even ex uh, you know, speak to how big of a win that was for the team. Uh, picking up that kill right before Snipe Down captures it. Picking up another kill on Roy who goes to secure nest. it. Oh, do? Ninja running back for that nest and now he puts it in. But yeah, a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, you do this, I'll do that. A kind of a hiccup here for Renegades. All right, if that goes to 199 at the end of this game, I'm looking at whoever <laughs> left that nest real early. But either way, Renegades, like I said, in a really great position. It looks like they do have the double cap going on. They are even aware of where Roy is trying to come and they do get the triple cap. So that's huge because even if they kill commonly here, then they still have to sit in the yard for however long it takes to cap this look, thing. And the pressure doesn't stop. And Ninja hitting a clutch plasma pistol. There are several members here, but somehow two members of Renegades dropping like that. And this is Evil Genius' it's time to push out. They committed way too much to try to stop them from uh, stopping the triple cap. Yeah, so we're going to see, it uh, looks like EG going to hold this bottom, middle, and yard setup. They're not going to try to hold it for long. They're going to try to rotate towards the nest and try to get the nest, however commonly, is over there. And it looks like Renegades is going to be pick up that yard as well. So commonly in really great position. Is he going to be able to get this kill? This is absolutely crucial kill that he needs to land. He doesn't get it, but he does at least get the reset at the same time on Nest. So Renegade's continuing to score. However, if he gets that kill, that's a potential triple cap because now uh, Suspector taking Nest by himself, and it looks like Renegade's trying to capture bottom middle, and they don't. So it goes from being a triple cap now to actually getting captured on with Camo coming up soon, Kyle. That was a big switch and change of pace here. What could have just happened commonly was playing extremely sneakily. I liked it a lot. He is back here for round two against this Specter and wins that round two here. So look for this hill to go, Nest Control to go back in the favor of Renegades. You know, I'm shocked that that went so close and that nobody else was in position to pick off the one-shot guy sitting in the Nest. EG just focused way too much on bottom middle and they still lose bottom middle. At the very least, they could have helped him over at that Nest. So commonly making up for the misplay that he had. This is a huge fight over here again, commonly versus Specter. That's the third time in a row and commonly a little bit of disrespect on Specter's body. And that was a kind of a sloppy battle. Lots of shots being fired. Good amount of misses for both players, but commonly does pick up the victory. Make sure Suspector knows that he did, and then quickly charges the bottom mid. Yeah, and a nice job evading that grenade, too. So they're in a pretty prime position because they have to force now EG to capture that yard and a little sneaky jumps there coming from commonly. It looks like Roy got out of the hill, so that was a huge misplay from Roy. It allows them to get the reset, and the triple cap still in effect. And you had all four members there. I just wanted to stay on death cam so we could see everybody. And just like that, they do hold it off and grab another few seconds, and there's not gonna be enough time for EG to push out before everyone's back off the spot. Exactly, Kyle. Everyone was spawning. That's why they're able to collapse on that and still die and still not really worry about the map control. They all spawn on that blue ramp, so they're just gonna now rotate over there. Looks like Snipe down inside the nest. Ninja trying to lay down the shots on the guy over at the loop stairs. So nice job sp spreading out for Evil Geniuses. They're solo capping, though. They're gonna need to double cap these if they wanna take them a little bit quicker. Looks like the nest is being contested. They do get bottom middle, they do get nest, and Yard goes over the side of Renegade. So a triple cap for a quick second, um, but Evil Geniuses now find themselves at least holding the bottom middle in nest, which is the most viable in this game type. You know, in a few more seconds here, and we're gonna, any chance of Ev Evil Geniuses bringing it back is gonna look like a reverse of what just happened to them last week when they fell short to Allegiance here. So still three, oh, oh my, look how many nade. people are bottom mid.
Yeah, that was a huge nade. The thing is, though, is that commonly decided that he wanted to go around for the flank. So he got out of the hill. This is a big kill on Suspector. If he can land it, the camo's still up. Ninja getting that kill. He has to know, though, he can't go up there. No shield. So he waits, gets that kill on Lunchbox, picks up the double. That's going to be sniped down, trying to get him with that nade. So uh, Ninja thought that he could go up there and try to get towards S4. Maybe he could have just dropped down and stayed alive. Um, and Suspector, really nice play, staying alive. Two crouching inside the flowers, making his way towards the yard here. I don't think that this is really the priority he's going to end up getting taken down maybe try to help uh, more towards bottom center because now renegades in pretty good position but either way still eg able to get bottom center now they need to shift their focus towards defending and i really like that out of suspector he picks up a free kill on victory helps finish off penguin as another kill and basically it's just a huge distraction for his team as they're able to secure bottom mid and now this is evil genius's chance to start closing this gap and bringing this game back yeah roy kind of overextended though a little bit when it ended up charging the yard by himself not that big of a deal because people are going to be able to reset and suspector does get a kill also Lunchbox getting a kill on Victory X. So Renegades making a little bit of a mistake. They had the numbers, the four on three advantage. If they would just make a smart push together, then that would have been really big for them. And now they finally realize, all right, guys, we need to make an educated push. We need to group together here. Where's everyone going? And it looks like now is their time to push. The thing is, they have a decent lead. So they have an opportunity. <laughs> Snipe down, getting that kill, picking up the double. The thing is, is, they have a couple of pushes. They're up, you know, 30 points. They probably have, I would say, two or three more pushes before the game's actually tied. So they have a couple trial and error moments here. Uh, you're definitely correct. Now, Snipe Down, picking up a you know play out of Royal 2's book here. We saw it from Snipe, uh, Snipe, Snake Bite uh, earlier as well. Just great positioning, so many different angles. Picks up that barrel kill at first, and then another uh, cleaning up uh, another kill for that double. Now he's going to be taken out. Commonly is bottom center here, but Lunchbox and another member of Evil Genius is quickly contesting this. So not really any great opportunities for Renegades to, to get control here. Now we've got about four members going uh, heads up, and I like this play. Rather than commit yeah. to that bottom mid, go for the nest spawn exactly, first. Exactly, exactly. Spectre realizing that he needs to come over there um, and, and lay down some sort of help towards this nest. And a really nice job by Penguin just being so sneaky. I don't know if he thought that that player had camo or not, but Penguin in the perfect position at the right time. And the thing is, is even though the pushes weren't really successful from Renegades, at least they were able to flip the spawns and create evil geniuses to be on that side of the map towards the yard and get nest for themselves. Now they have so much more to work with now that they have nest compared to just having yard. And that allows them now to make this play on bottom middle and that was quite Ooh. oh my oh. gosh that was absolutely huge if if he can now get bottom middle because of that play you can go back and look at that 1v1 however they are not and eg doing a great job of bringing this one back renegade still has nest looks like they're trying to get bottom middle and yard at the same time they're just gonna need to get on the same page and just focus on getting one of these and it looks like bottom middle is gonna be that one that they get so renegades needs to shift their focus over towards defending that was a really great job by eg getting those points and getting that combo back but now this is renegades time to shine they have bottom middle they have ness and they have to have a good push from eg from the side of eg for eg to come back into this and and just to kind of highlight on that one more time that is something you don't see a whole lot it's something you definitely don't see at a snipe down it's something you don't see at a snipe down multiple times in a single series yes so great sure. job by renegades yeah. and, and snipe down definitely missing some shots here today yeah, definitely. But the thing is, is the plays that these Renegades players are making are just really high level plays. I mean, it's not like Snipe Down's, you know, not giving it his all, not having, you know, pretty solid shots. It's just that these guys are, you know, you saw the medal. It was a perfect. He, and this is actually really smart from Commonly. If there was ever a time to kind of be a little bit aggressive over here, it's when the other team has to desperate because what you can do is everyone kind of rotates towards bottom middle if you're evil geniuses, and you swoop behind them and capture the yard when they least expect it. So as long as Renegades can just hold this off, they should be able to take this And one. look at this. There is just not enough time. Everyone is collapsing, picking up the last several kills, and that is going to be it. Two members down already. Three to one, 168 victory here in game number four. And I'm just thinking back, I was getting so confused for a moment. We just saw so many different games played with those replays. But let's take a quick look at the stats here. We got Ninja on Renegades and Snipe Down on Evil Geniuses picking up the tw kills in the 20 mark. But like at the same time, you know, we there were some big misplays here. You know, Snipe Down put up great stats, but yeah. he, he should have had better stats because there are some things that don't normally happen to him. 
and it was happening a lot more consistently than usual. Well, definitely, I think it's a little concerning as well. You know, 21 kills when you look at, you know, Suspector and Lunchbox's kills combined, that was 23 total. So uh, overall, three to one, Renegades is gonna walk with walk away with that absolutely crucial series, pretty much a must win for both teams. Now Evil Geniuses is gonna kind of fall out of that potential top four area. Renegade stock is gonna go up much higher and, um, Overall, everybody from Renegades individually just stepped it up. Usually we see one player kind of shining for their team. We were highlighting Ninja before this, but we switched to everybody's point of view and everybody was making plays, Kyle. I completely agree. The Penguin, things we saw from Penguin, uh, even in like the death camp player outline when he would charge in a 1v3 situation and picked up two kills, uh, commonly with the perfect shots there. Ninja with that embarrassing reversal on snipe down. Just so many different things happening. Very and everybody. Very uncharacteristic coming from Snipe Down. Very uncharacteristic coming from EG. Mainly miscommunication, you know, like you said, the mistakes that we saw in the Strongholds Plaza, getting out of the hills when you need to stay contesting them, not finishing off the Strongholds when you need to actually stay in them. So, um, you know, EG is going to have to go back to the drawing board, sit down with Tawi, decide what they're going to do from here on out. Also, maybe do the math on what series they need to win coming up and kind of realizing they need a little bit of luck on their side now, kind of rooting against, you know, Renegades, rooting against Legions if they weren't already doing so. Yeah, not only do they have to step it up, but they need to hope things get, you know, work out in their favor. They get a little bit lucky because they're going to need some people to start losing as well. But we do have Commonly available here for an interview. Commonly, can you hear us? Yep, I'm good. Can hear you guys. Good. Well, first of all, congratulations. What an intense series. Tell us a little bit about what just happened. I have not watched that many replays in quite some time. I mean, it was just a great series. That's, I mean, that's the only thing I can say. It was a really good series, super competitive, and I'm glad we were the ones that came out on top. All right. Now, I believe we've got a wild penguin in the background. I believe Pokemon Go came out as well recently. It looks like a, a wild penguin now. So you yep. guys are in the same location. Did that help you guys, uh, you know, come out and, and, you know, play this series? Do you think that played a big factor? Oh, 100%. Um, when the, the way Penguin plays, if I'm looking at a screen, I can... I can help him so much more, and I mean, if all four of us were here, like, th I think this series would have been a 3-0 sweep, like, <laughs> quick, but, and as you guys know, EG were all next to each other, and they had that, you know, that sketch out lag in that Plaza game. I think we would have won that game, by the way, if um, they didn't all lag out. Yeah, uh, yeah, you guys definitely had control. I think it was 46 to 44, ended up being yeah. 50 to 49 once the replay was all said and mm -hmm. done. What was your guys' thoughts on the actual replay, and did you kind of realize that you did have control at that point? Well, um, before the replay, I'm like, guys, it doesn't matter if we win or lose this game, let's just keep going, because we know we kind of got, you know, milked in a sense where they all lagged out. But I tried to tell my teammates that it doesn't really matter if we lose or win, let's just, let's just keep playing regardless of the... So did you guys switch? We were having a discussion up here about the beginning strategies. Were you aware yeah. of what their beginning strategies would have been? Or were you kind of just like, let's just play it out here. Whoever wins, wins. Let's just focus on these next couple games. What was the you know conversation while that uh, replay was taking place? Well, we um, we definitely had a different starting strat for that Plaza game. And it worked out too. But um, that's just the way Plaza works. Whoever gets overshield like, should win the game. Just be and they only need like four kills. Um, it was a choke on our part. I made a bad push at the very end when I died. I had sniper, so I'll I'll take the blame on that one. But uh, after after we lost, we were just like, all right, this is going too fathom. We know how to play, and we just know we're better than them. Wow, definitely some bold words there. And hey, the the game doesn't lie, and you guys consistently put up all six games or seven games that we just played now, consistently, uh, you know, putting on a performance. Now, in those replay games, you know, on that on Fathom there, you know, what yeah. was the communications like each time, especially going into overtime, uh, that first and second time there for you? I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was definitely getting hectic, and it was hard trying to stay calm. But um, the last replay, the one where we won, we were just like, all right, we know how to play. Let's just focus on getting Railgun and getting Camo and just playing off of that. Yeah, they definitely came out hot in that third game, <clears throat> in that third replay. They ended up getting, you know, that first cap to start. How were you guys able to just to kind of weather the storm, regroup, reset, and then come out so strong to win that one 3-1? Um, I guess that's just how we are as players. We, you know, Victory X has been around for like 10 years. He definitely knows how to, you know, keep calm. And it was definitely all of us just saying, all right, it's just one cap. Let's just regroup. Let's just get Railgun and 
try to win. And now I want to get uh, your opinion because I saw it once from you. We had you on stream and then once from Ninja as well where you guys did some pretty dirty things. I think both times it was on Snipe Down as well. Oh. Do you remember what I'm talking about there or do you on, remember on Ninja's example? I, I don't remember Ninja's example. Um, I remember me destroying Snipe Down on Fathom, if that's what you're talking about. <laughs> There was yeah. definitely there was definitely a lot of outplays going out through that entire series. We could have made a whole montage out of that series. Overall, what are you guys kind of looking forward to now? Because you realize that maybe Allegiance is kind of your biggest competition when it comes to getting into that fourth spot. Or are you guys kind of taking it day by day? Have, or have you even thought that far? Um, our biggest goal right now is obviously just to qualify for the LAN tournament. So we're just going to keep on scrimming every day. Um, just have consistent practice schedules and just you know try to secure that fourth place spot. All right, well, commonly, congratulations once again. Make sure you tell Penguin congratulations as well. We appreciate you joining us each and every time here, and good luck going into tomorrow as well. Thank you. I was still the problem. Bye. <laughs> you heard it there from Commonly. You know, I love his, his attitude. He's always a good sport. Uh, you know, took took the responsibility on himself, especially for that initial loss on the, in the mm -hmm. Plaza game. Uh, so a class act as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely playing with a chip on his shoulder. Otherwise, he wouldn't throw out a couple of the comments that he did. I think he had about three really overly confident comments there, which I have no problem with. You know, he's still in the heat of the battle. Um, still a lot of adrenaline flowing, and, and some words can get thrown around. So, you know, that's not uncommon here in esports and, you know, at Halo and the Halo Championship Series. So um, Not only uncommon, but commonly. Yes, very com commonly. So, um, you know, EG... Obviously, you know, the forums were talking about them beforehand. They're, they're going to be talking about them a lot more now. Where is the problem lying? Are they going to be able to fix it? Will they be able to come out hot tomorrow in their series as well? So a lot of questions when it comes to that team and um, a lot of questions answered for Renegades today. I completely agree. Now, of course, if you want to check out any of these games or rewatch some of these matches, you can always head over to youtube.com forward slash ESL Halo and be able to check out all those all that information there. And, of course, a lot of exciting games and a lot of uh, big individual plays and embarrassing things that have happened over the course of today as well, starting off in Series 1. But of course, don't go anywhere. That is only the second match of the night for us. We still have a lot of action uh, coming up here shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right